All right, now we have Boger here saying the Overwatch servers are cooked. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, we can. We have 20, 20%. With 20%. Keep shooting. Just keep shooting. Doesn't matter what happens. Keep shooting. Just whatever happens, happens. It's like playing the casino. We're fighting the voices here. I'm a cage, cage. Caging, caging. <laughs> caging, guys. Just keep fighting on point. Caging. I, I, I listen. I can't. I don't know what you have. I'm pressing Q. I'm pressing Q. I got my cage. Hold W for five seconds. I'm holding W. I'm holding W. No, no, no. Is it work? Oh, I died. Did they win? <laughs> Look at me. I'm like a bot. <laughs> I'm legit a bot. How do I die? <laughs> I'm dead here. I respawn. <laughs> Honestly, that's me playing tank half the time. I love that you have no idea what's going on, and then when you watch it back and replay, it's just like this whole different story. Meanwhile, the other teams are shooting at you, and you're like, what is going on? Now we obviously have ML7, who uh, always fun to game with ML7, just did the other day. Uh, we have a Kiriko Infinite Wall Bug, which I actually heard about this. I haven't seen it yet. Let's see it. I've got a few, I've got a few tricks. Over here. Have I understand you have to use scroll wheel? <laughs> Wait. How do you do it? Over here. That's insane. You can't even hear it, dude. Yep. And you can go diagonally, pretty fast. You Wait, can literally wall climb. How do you do it? You scroll wheel. You have bound jump on the mouse wheel, and then just do it slowly. Don't do it fast. Okay, wait. Hey, where's jump? Jump is here. Okay, I gotta rebind the pink key. I've got a few tricks. Wait, give me a second. I've got a few tricks. Oh, yeah, that's, I like that. That's fun. Wait, I'm, I'm oh, scroll wheel you. always does this. In like so many games, can, scroll wheel just breaks key mines. Like a common. Honestly, hey, I'm not gonna uh, use that big, but I. What if I did? But I won't. Two leg spider. Watch pet peeves episode three. Oh, okay. My biggest pet peeve is cleanse being an answer to literally every ability in the game, including alts. It's crazy. One ability stops all others plus normal damage, and I hate it. I've been saying this since Kiri's release. Cleanse does not need to make you intangible, immortal, cleanse you, and heal you. I will say though that with the release of season nine, I have noticed that Kiri's have to use cleanse way more often to compensate for weaker healing. So it's much easier to bait out the ability than before, and it's way less yeah. common that I, you I can see that. all countered. I can see that. DPS players complaining every time there's a new hero that's not a DPS is if their role isn't twice the size of tanker support. Okay, listen, I can understand both sides of this. Yes, the DPS category is much larger than every other category, but here's the thing. We have gotten Junker Queen, Ramatra, and Mauga for tank, and we've gotten Kiri, Lifeweaver, and Iari for support, and then Sojourn just released with the game. My point is, we have added a ton of new tanks and supports, and if you're a DPS player, it's perfectly reasonable to want a new hero for your role. And DPS players are in luck because of the upcoming- Yeah, I, see, I can pause right there and say that, like, I- I'm actually kind of in, in agreement that because there, even though there's a bunch of DPS, I think it's, you still need to give players DPS. Like, I, I don't, I don't really, I think that's fine. I, I think it's okay. To, like, you don't want to just be like, oh no, like you're not going to give them heroes because there's a bunch of DPS. I think it's fine. And yeah, DPS is going to be, um, season 10. And sure. I think it's okay to add DPS heroes. I'm not saying do four DPS heroes in one season. I actually kind of like what they're doing this season, where they're doing... This season is DPS support and tank, and I think if they go on that regular cadence, I think I'm okay with that. Upcoming hero venture is a DPS. Now, do I still think there's too many DPS? Yes, I think we need to release at least two supports and two tanks in between every DPS release. But there's some people out there who literally think DPS shouldn't get any heroes until the other roles catch up, and I just don't think that's fair to That DPS would take players. forever, I My feel like. My biggest pet peeve is that some characters are just unplayable, especially with tank matchups, and then if the tank refuses to swap. I think tank mains especially know the struggle of having unplayable characters. Tank is the easiest role to counter in the game. And let me explain yes, something it real is. quick, because when I made my Why Tank Sucks video, a few months ago, people seem to miss one of the points. Okay. Yes, every hero in the game can get countered. Yes. But if you play Junkrat and the enemy team picks Farah, there's a 50% chance that your teammate picks a hit scan or is already on a hit scan. You don't need to stress about countering that Farah 100% of the time, and you could still play Junkrat in the Farah without throwing the game. If you play Winston, though, and the enemy team picks Bastion, you are just handicapped for the rest of the game. No matter how good of a Winston you are, you are now getting less value just because they chose Bastion. And in Overwatch 1, you would have a D.Va who could dive with you and help you fight that Bastion. You had a second tank that could help you 
just like how DPS has a second DPS who could help them. Other roles just don't have it as bad when it comes to counters. Yesterday, I was live streaming here on TikTok and won a game as Zen against a Doomfist, Sombra, Tracer, Kiri, and Lucio. There's no way I could have won a game as Winston against Diva, Reaper, Bastion, Brig, and Ana. If you want to be in the next video, you could submit a pet peeve by commenting down below or joining the Discord in my bio. And yeah, not bad. I mean, just to kind of summarize that point, like, like tanking like a 5v5 situation will always kind of be in a spot where like you're going to get countered because it's easier to counter one role than it is to counter two, right? So like, if they have a really good Widow and I go Winston to counter their Winston, they could also have a Reaper stand in the AFK on top of the Widow, and then I can't counter their 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 Widow anymore, right? I'm not going to do that, and no one's going to actually do that. But the point I'm making is, like, it's a lot easier to counter whatever the tank is on, and that's why most default swaps happen to go against the tank. That, and that, but that becomes, and that's where, like, that's where a lot of people have their issue with counter swapping. It's like, it's a part of the game, yes. It's just more like tanks will get counter swapped even more. And because tanks are at where they're at now, tanks are becoming the hero that, like, People just struggle on tank because you're you're getting you're either getting counter swapped, you're taking all of the damage from the other team, even if you're not getting counter swapped, your supports aren't able to keep you alive as much anymore because of the DPS pass. So there's so many things that are happening to tanks that make it a lot more difficult, right? Uh, th uh, this is from Camu. And they say this Moira is on the list. I don't know what happened here. Let's see. Can I please have an explanation as to why Overwatch players are so allergic to taking space in this game? It just so happens that nine times out of ten, when we're in a winning engagement, it's like half of my team has a brain reset moment and is like, oh, I think all four of us should go back to the cart right now. Pause this fight right here. You know, this first of all, first of all, first of all. Where does this happen? Because I have 1,234 hours of objective time, and I can't get my teammates to fall back to the cart at all. And it doesn't matter what role I'm on. Am I on tank? I'm pushing the cart. Am I on DPS? I'm pushing the cart. Am I in support? I'm pushing the cart. Am I the cart? I'm pushing the cart. This fight's going well. It's a 5v2. You know, we can have just one Ana on the cart. Guys, I think we should stop right here. And we should just all go and sit our asses on the cart. What do you guys say to that? Why? I see that I have two other people with me. I see that this Alari is weak. I go, I get the Alari pick. I have the two people with me. And then just like that, I'm dead. I watch the replay. I see this Moira using her fade to go back to cart for no reason. It's like she just, she just had a blip. It's like she forgot everything. It's like her memories went away. She's like, oh, what am I? What am I doing here? I, I gotta get back to the cart. Like, why? If we were just all there, we would have been fine. We would have pushed the cart all the way to the end, and we would have had a chance in overtime to win this game. Instead, we all a. Why is this? Why does this remind me of like the meme where it's just like first time? Is, is that other? That's what it reminds me of. You know what I mean? Like I'm sitting here as a tank, and I'm just like, yeah. And you can tell, like, something about this game. They had to go back and watch it on that one because they... But, like, the thing is, is, like, this is why it's always good to play at the pace of your teammates because sometimes... Oh, I mean, the Moira, in theory, should have gone with them, right? Like, I'm not disagreeing with that. I just... I love seeing this, like... Abandon our position, give up all of our space, abandon me to die, and then lose the game. Why? Why would you fade out of this, Moira? Why? What? Why? What? I, I think the cool thing about Jerry Seinfeld being able to play Overwatch 2 is it really makes it, like, kind of connects you to, like, that mainstream and then, like, what Overwatch is now, right? And I think that's one of the really cool things about that. I'm definitely not a master at this game yet. So, if I am dead wrong and we shouldn't have held that spot up there, please let me know. I, maybe I need some coaching here. Yes, I should have realized that my team wasn't there sooner. Understand that. Should have gotten out of there. Shouldn't we have just held this position? Am I wrong? Am I crazy? <laughs> I don't know why you just sounded like him. I love that. I mean, honestly, like, yeah, your teammate should have been with you. But I, I think at a certain point, it's also, it's also understanding, like, the pace of your team. And one of the adjustments I have to make as a tank player early on is recognizing if my team wants to play aggressive, if my team wants to play passive, if my team wants to play kind of in between that, or if I'm pushing the cart. Nine out of 10 times, I'm pushing the cart. All right, we got uh, the Whiska, and it just, I have no context to this. We'll see what happens. Everybody's been having the same problem with Overwatch 2. You win a few games, and then you just go on a massive losing streak. After hours of research, I have finally found how to stop this from happening. <laughs> the 
I mean, easier said than done. Uh, we have Southern Spartan saying a very popular strat amongst Moira players. All right, let's see. This is one setting for Moira and Overwatch 2 to win more of your games. Go into your settings, scroll down until you see primary fire, and go ahead and unbind it. There you go. Not a lot of people know the strat, so you might get some hate in the chat. But trust me, this will take your Moira gameplay to the next level. I mean, I feel like some players don't even need to do that, right? Like, I, I like I think I think more players will learn that that keybind exists from that than knowing to unbind it, right? Some play players are like, wait, what is that ability? Let me go test that. What is this? All right, what do we got here? We got uh, Noah again here. What really makes a character hard to play? Any hero that I play that I suck at? Genuine question that I need to hear some answers for. Is yep. how hard a character is affected by how good the character is? So what I mean by that is, if a character yep. is very meta, is that character easier than if that character was like an F-tier character? Because anytime I say a single thing about how Doomfist players are constantly throwing my games, the comment section is just full of Doomfist players going, Oh, well, he's so hard to play. But back in the Godfist meta, if you remember, I think it was season 2 or season 3, when they overbuffed Doomfist a lot, no one was calling him hard to play. Everybody was playing him and getting tons of value. The same thing is true about Genji. People say that Genji is very hard to play, but back in season one, when he was far and away the best DPS in the game, nobody was saying how difficult he was. And then on the flip side of that, you have mm -hmm. characters that are normally regarded as very easy, being very bad, such as Mercy being like the worst support in the game right now. So does that mean right now Mercy is hard to play because you have to play her at a much higher level to get out value? I'm not really quite sure what the answer is because I don't think a single person would say, oh yeah, yeah, Mercy's really hard to play right now. And at the same time, there will always be people that call Doomfist hard unless he's like absolutely giga broken. Well, I think the best way to explain I that object. is kind of what I said at the beginning there. Like, if the hero is hard, the hero is, and I can't play it well, it's because the hero's bad and not strong. Because I'm, I'm amazing at every hero I play. Um, the real talk of that is what you'll find is that no matter what happens, people will complain in some way about something with that. It just depends on what the meta is. So if somebody's enjoying their, their meta, they're not going to go and tell you the hero's ridiculous they're gonna go have a good time so i think you'll find that no matter what the season is no matter what the what the changes are there'll be there's you're gonna see complaints about something when you make when you make a post like that and also if the hero isn't good at the time it's because the hero's bad it's not my fault i'm i'm, I'm really good at all the heroes all right we have overwatch thoughts here love the name tank is the hardest role in overwatch at the moment none of y'all appreciate just how hard the job is for tank right now tank appreciation never thought this would see the light of day is 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 this what people have been telling me when they say I need to play Subway Surfers or Temple Run on my on my streams? Like, is this what people saying I need to do to add, add really add to the content? This right here, okay. Day in Overwatch, Ryan players are some of God's strongest soldiers. That's a classic XQC clip right there. Being a tank main is so painful right now, especially maining Roadhog. Zen just ends you. But Zen got nerfed. Nobody has sympathy for Roadhog players, sorry. True. I swear tanks have had to put in the most effort ever since 5v5 came out. I'm a support main. It's horrid and if you don't play near perfect for your rank, you get blamed Lamau. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm actually gonna wonder if that's a support main or not. Just because like, it's like, okay, I gotta make my point here. Let me put in parentheses at the end. I'm a support main, by the way. I wanna point that out. Always endorse a tank every game. They truly doing God's work out here. Dear DPS main, their job would be easy. Which actually, I get that though. No, I get that though, because I always have to explain to people that I enjoy season nine and then also point out that I'm a tank player, right? Where I'll be like, hey, by the way, I am, I enjoy season nine. And this is coming from a tank player. So I actually understand adding in there that you're a support player, right? Because like, I do the same thing when I have to explain to people, I like season nine and this is coming from a tank player, which is arguably probably the worst season for tanks. To look up and shoot the flyers once in a while, signed with love. The Moira who has to stop healing to kill the Mercy because you won't even acknowledge there's one in play. Moira main equals opinion voided. I love when tanks pretend their role is hard, when characters like Hog, Maga, and Orisa can 1v1 the entire roster with their monitors turned off. Shut up. <laughs> yes, main. Okay, you know what? This, this, this video is selling me on, on, on putting some temple run or subway servers on my stream. This is content right here. They went on Twitter, they grabbed a bunch of stuff, put it on TTS, and put Temple Run in the background. This right here is next level. I get it now. Also, I've been talking about how I want to do Reddit reacts and like 
YouTube comment reacts. This is, I'm doubling down now. I'm definitely doing that. This is great. All right, we have Yeshalot saying the bare minimum. Oh, this is going to be a good one. I can see where this is going. Article just dropped. Apparently, they're going to be putting coins in Overwatch's Battle Pass. Ooh, who, who would have thought about that, huh? Almost like players have been asking for that since season one, huh? <laughs> Like, what? Like, what? I mean, I'm glad they're finally starting to make positive changes for the fucking game. Like, heroes aren't going to be in the battle pass anymore. That's great. But, like, I just get so frustrated because if you read the Kotaku article that just came out, it showcases just how dog shit the developers were treated. They are basically ignored every step of the way. When they would finish something, the developers were like, Oh, is that the Blizzard quality we know and love? And they just have to dick around for fucking ever. So it's just like, yeah, heroes never should have been in the battle pass in the first place. Currency should have been in the battle Pause that for a second. Um, one, one, hopefully the changes to everything now is better. Uh, obviously, that, I'm hoping that the new, I, hopefully the, the change to Microsoft will be very helpful because we heard a lot of stories in the previous uh, leadership and obviously it wasn't a lot, of, not a lot of good stuff. So hopefully, and, and, and hopefully the, that what you're seeing now is a positive change for that, where they're doing that stuff. Because um, there was a lot of, they wanted to do things, but then we're like, no. Or there was a lot of like, we want to work on this. Oh, by the way, we need you to go work on another game for two months, and then you can come back to this. Like, there's a lot of that that you heard about that happened there. So hopefully with the new management and like the new availability to do more of what they want, you have less of having to worry about that. And we, we saw a lot of that with the previous um, stuff. So... Yeah, I mean, to the statement of like, yeah, it should have been, you know, heroes free from the get-go. I mean, I, I won't disagree with that. We, I think we all were, were concerned about that from the get-go. Obviously, more coins, yes. I Once again, the, the coin discussion is interesting because I don't know how it works with like... I don't know what... I, I actually, I'm actually curious now on how much Fortnite makes on their shop in comparison to their battle pass. That's just a completely side note. I'm just curious on that one. I imagine their, their collabs probably do so well. And I'm very curious on that one. But yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot of stuff that, from the get-go, Overwatch 2 should have had from the get-go. And it didn't. Now we're seeing... That's why I really enjoyed Season 9. And now going into Season 10, it feels like they're starting to go to where we all wanted to see Overwatch 2 go with their stuff and, like, go with the features they have and go with a much better rank system and go with having heroes for free. So I like the trajectory they're on now. In the Battle Pass since day one, since it was uh, every other game was doing it, and the developers were treated like shit during development, after development, quarter one, they were breaking record profits. Guess what happened? They were told, hey, come back to office. 2023 is over. They made $225 million. Guess what Guess what happens? The PVE team gets fired because Activision and Microsoft doesn't see PVE as profitable. One of the most important things about Overwatch is its lore, its character, all that stuff, right? Its characters, all that stuff. And they just don't seem to care about moving in that direction. But yeah, just to talk about the lore part of things, I do think there's ways they can implement the lore and I think League did a good job of that with Arcane. And this goes back to, oh, here, go, here he goes again, talking about how he wants to see more animated shorts and a Netflix TV show. Well, yeah, because I think that would be a good way to tie the lore to the game. And you've seen it with multiple games now. Cyberpunk? Arcane? I think Dota, actually. Did Dota have one? Point is, there is probably so much they could do from a lore side for a TV show. Hopefully, they eventually do something like that and have a TV show. I, I I don't dare say a movie because we listen. I love World of Warcraft. We saw the Warcraft movie. There's a lot more. There was a lot left to be desired. It wasn't bad. I mean, truthfully, I don't mind the Warcraft movie. But like, there was so much more the WoW movie could have done, and they could have split it into different parts, etc. So like, a TV show for Overwatch would be excellent. I hope that one day they do. And truthfully, if they are working on an Overwatch anime, I don't think we'll know until it's released. Because that is probably what they're told. That's what they saw with Arcane. Hopefully that's something they're working on. That's all I'm saying. So it's it's frustrating. And then it just sucks, man. It's hard to want to support a game where the developers are constantly treated like shit and players are constantly viewed as wallets. It's like, yeah, some cool changes are coming, but it's like, it's 10 seasons. It took them nine seasons to fix ranked, ten seasons to make monetization a little bit better, and I don't know. Yeah, the main selling point for Overwatch 2's existence and for Overwatch 1's death was for PvE. And now that PvE has basically been all but confirmed to be dead, it's just frustrating, man. Yeah, I mean, and keep in mind, I, chat knows how much I was looking forward to PvE, so 
They ended up did, obviously, recently, if you didn't see chat, more than likely, I mean, it, it's pretty much confirmed, PvE is, is done. Um, and obviously that was disappointing, because obviously I really enjoyed the PvE aspect of stuff. Um, on, on, on the same side of, like, they're, they're like, on the, the stuff now, I, I, and keep in mind, I don't know the, the ins and outs of how everything works there. My guess is that even if they wanted to make any changes last year, there was going to be some, um, uh, how do we explain it? Probably some, uh, some of the higher-ups at the time probably weren't going to be, uh, willing to do any of those changes as we, as we saw in, uh, articles after the company moved. Um, so hopefully... The company's going in a much more positive direction with stuff, and it, it sounds like they really want to take the game into a different level, which is why I've been happy with Season 9, and I hope that continues into more seasons. All right, and then we have our last one of TikTok Reacts here. We have Flats underscore OW. I'll have to check out the stream. It says, late night five stack games hit different. Well, let's go find out. You ready for this? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready whenever you are. Give me a second. Do you have speed? Yeah, I speed this guy. Wanna go? Are you ready? Going. Oh, let's break it. Oh, let's break it. Oh, that is... Oh, that's what? <laughs> <laughs> what the? That was me! Nah, nah, this is a conspiracy. You guys are doing this on purpose. Guys, what's happening? Oh, right. oh is Flats blame blaming blame his teammates for him deranking? Are you kidding me? Are, are you blaming your teammates for deranking, Flats? You would never! I played that perfectly, okay? I would never! I, I, I. Where is my speed boost? Okay? Where was my speed boost? Flats, are you serious right now? What do you mean, dude? What do you mean, are you serious, dude? Can you explain to me how you fell off the mountain? He actually just straight up shot. Ready for a shot. We're done. Guys. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. One of you. Cleanse and a teleport. The other has a teleport and can go invisible. And the other one of you has fade. How the Don't speak to me after you. Is that if Flats had applied enough overhealth of that Lucio ult, 10 million, I bet you could have survived that kill volume. Flats fault, to be honest. That's what I'm saying. See, Flats wants to blame us for you know him losing these games. It's just clearly on Flats, right? You know what I'm saying? Like if you, if if you're not playing to your maximum level at 6 a.m. on a five stack and ranked. Are you even playing Overwatch? Are you kidding me right now? I played that perfectly. I don't point against that Doomfist 2 vs 1, you f***ing bot for that f***ing age. How did you shut up? Emo, do you know what mewing is? Mewing? Mewing. He knows meowing. By the way, if anybody missed that 5 stack, I don't know if we won a game. I'm gonna be real with y'all, we got rolled. That 5 stack was a treat though. That's why I've always enjoyed the option of 5 stacking because, let me tell you, that was a treat. That 5 stack was something.